Today we will create the view for the org products index. We wrote the code in one of the previous videos, but we never wrote the view, and that's what we were going to do today. Now, you can see that I've already set out a layout for us for our index.html.erb, and it's pretty much the same as our other views. So create your view in your org products folder and start off with this kind of layout. Now, what we want to do is we want to do a if org products count because we only want to show something if we actually have results. So if org products count is greater than zero, then we're going to do something. So if we have that, then we're going to do something. Otherwise, where we have to, where we're not going to show anything. So let's just finish that with an end. So org products is found by using this code, org products paginate page params page where uh, the org company ID equals our company ID. So this paginate function, where does it come from? Well, if you look into our gem file, you've actually installed it with a will paginate and will paginate bootstrap. Will paginate bootstrap pretty much just bootstraps your will paginate gem so or functions. So. If you don't use Bootstrap, then you'll have something that looks like this. Will paginate Bootstrap makes it looks a little bit more cleaner. So this is the documentation for for the paginate gem, and this is the code that we we were using in our controllers with our org product paginate, and in our in our views we'll use at we call the function will paginate. So that is something that I just wanted to get out of the way. Now, back to our code. So we want to run the will paginate. So let's open up our braces with the percentage signs to write some Ruby code. So will paginate org products. And the renderer here is going to be bootstrap pagination because we want it to look a little bit more cleaner with the uh, with, uh, styling that is provided by bootstrap. So that's that. Now let's open up an uh, uh, unordered list and let's have the class be equal to products and inside this function we'll do org products dot each so we're going to loop through each product and for each product we're going to do something and let's just end this function because it's loop and must have an end. Now inside this unordered list inside this loop we're going to create some list items and inside this list item we're going to start off with a div and this div class will have a class of call md2 with prod image so that's that inside this image we want to do another if statement so there's a lot of ifs here not php so we do another if and before we write the condition let's just put in the else and the end now if this products image is blank is not blank then we're going to show it by doing an image tag so image tag product we're going to use the image URL, medium, and it's going to be a 2s to make it to string. And the class here will be display image. So after that, our else, let's open up another div. Now the class here is display image and we're gonna have an I class here to give it a little icon to show that to, sh to, to show something if there is actually no picture and we're just gonna show a question mark if there is no if there is no picture if the user didn't upload any picture then we're just gonna show an icon now let's open up a paragraph tag and in there we'll put picture unavailable and I cannot spell unavailable 
Okay, so that's all good and fine. Now under that, we have the picture, but we need a little bit of a description. So what we'll do is we'll open up another div class. I have call MD8. And we'll also have another class, org products index info. And we're gonna open up another div inside that. And it's going to have food product. And we're gonna have a link. This food product is gonna be a link. Link to product name. And that the product's name is going to be what's seen, but the link is actually to egg edit or product path product ID. So what is happening here? I think I have some bad HTML. I forgot to close tag. So we are in the back end and we are uh employee or someone related to company so if we click on a product name we should be able to edit it that's the idea behind it so also have weighting grams and this will show the products weight in grams and we'll just close that tag there and we're gonna open up another div approximately approximate available quantity because people will be purchasing things on the fly we actually don't want to give an exact count so to do that we'll just give it a little approximate because you know someone could purchase it online or someone could purchase it in the store and that won't be reflected online right now with this with this code so we will do uh, available approximate available quantity product available quantity so there's that and let's open up another div. There's a lot of divs going on. And this will have a class of price. Just because we want to let the price to look a little bit more different. So we'll open up price. And this is where we use our currency symbols. So remember that here we've tried to find out what currency uh, we're in. So using, using this currency will determine what kind of symbol will show up. So a currency symbol, and then we'll show the number after that. So number with precision. And what number with precision does is it makes the price as precise as two decimal places. So because you don't want a price with no decimal places because you won't be able to show cents. But if you show more than more than two, then it will it'll look awkward and not normal. So we'll just make the price to two decimal places with number with precision. And then you have div here, expiry date. And here we'll have product expiry date and string format time. So what this does is it just formats it to something a little bit more readable because our database timestamp is a little bit unreadable. So if you look at the times, this is the kind of timestamp you'll, you'll show the user if you don't use string format time. So that's what we use string format time for. And let's see what else is there. That's pretty much it for this code right now. So why don't we go down to this uh, on this ending ul tag and we'll also put a will paginate here because we want to be able to paginate wherever the user is to make it convenient they could click on uh, pagination at the bottom of the page or at the or at the top of the page that'll make it more convenient for them and that looks good so far and let's have a else with this if statement else what we'll do is we'll just open up a center tag and open up a header four and say that there are no items posted for sale by your company. So if there's no items, then that's what we will show. So let's go back over to our browser and we want to see the posted items here, but right now that's a dead link. So what we want to do is we want to change that in the sidebar. And that's something that I want to go through in the next video. 
So why don't we stop here? Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Try to do it for homework to 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 finish off this code and to make it so that the index is actually shown when I click this link. That is where this link will bring us to. So do that for homework and come back in the next video to see the answer to that kind of homework. But anyways, please rate, comment, subscribe. Uh, leave questions and comments in the comment box below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.